Welcome back to Fabric Tip Friday. Uh, this week, I came next door. I had my cousin actually just stop a little early today because it's fixing to take the cover off of this, and I thought it'd be a good time to just show a little, a few little things that I don't know a whole lot about. <laughs> now that that doesn't make sense, but I'll get I'll get there at some point. You always have people that have questions. When is it time to recover my airplane? And what's good fabric? What's bad fabric? Uh, I hear all the, the little terms, lifetime fabric and different things. Um, I'm not going to get into any of the legal parts that, you know, I've read through stuff, read through stuff, what the FAA considers. I'm just going to do a couple little explanations that I have seen. But first off, to me, when it's time to recover a plane, is the time that you're starting to see issues and you're just not happy with the way it looks. That's time to recover. You, uh, this plane is a 72 model. This thing has been, this is the original cover, but it's been right at almost 50 years old. And it was the old dope fabric, but it was light enough that it's not cotton, it's got sinking out under it. So whenever you go to buy an airplane, look at it as a time window. Let's just, I'm just gonna use an example of say 30 to 40 years as a lifetime of a fabric. The fabric's gonna last longer than that, but just consider that where are you buying on that timeline? If you buy a plane that's been covered three years ago, two years ago, five years ago, you've got a long life ahead of you. You buy that plane, a lot of times you gotta watch when the guy's trying to sell you a plane with a 30 year old fabric and he's telling you, but hey, it's got lifetime. You're, you're getting a pig in a poke where you're fixing to be ready for 50 grand. Trust me, he's gonna tell you that $3,000 will recover that plane, but it won't. So looking at a plane, and he'll probably go over now to some pictures, this is what I consider being ready to recover. This is over sinking out, but it's the older dope fabric. It's got a lot of patches. Uh, they have maintained it through the years. This airplane was still flying when it was brought into here. And I'm gonna show a few little examples of fabric test, but he's showing those pictures now of just what you see. When I'm done, we're gonna show that the fabric is actually still good on this plane, but you know, it's almost like you're embarrassed to go to a pancake breakfast when it looks like this, but it's still flyable. But the concern that I tell people is, what does the inside of the plane look like? You know, if you don't care what the outside looks like, well, there could be things on the inside you better care what they look like because it could be very unsafe or unairworthy. I can guarantee you when, we get to, when he gets fabric off of this, it'll probably get new wood stringers and new bulkheads throughout because they've been crushed through the years with the tightness of this uh, system on it. If we would have had air tech back in 72, would it look this bad? I would think not. It's just a new, newer technology of flexible stuff. But at 48 years, I don't care how good it looks. To me, it is far past the time of looking on the inside of a plane. We'll go back now, and if you, if you look in the FAA, when they talk about the different methods and the mall test method, supposedly a, an approved method, and, you know, I don't know, some, sometimes people will get into an argument, well, this is approved, this ain't approved. The one that I understood, or actual pro, approved method is, is you take a piece of fabric and you don't go under the airplane, you go where the sun is shining and where you have the most damage and that's where, you know, the, the silver, if the silver was not put on thick enough or the newer covering systems, if the UV barrier uh, type primer was not thick enough, you could get some kind of a deterioration. Unlike cotton, cotton, you can lock it up and completely out of the sunlight and it's slowly deteriorating. But they want you to cut a certain width strip and I'm not gonna get into all the legal and the numbers and all that, but when they talk about a pull test, this just happens to be an old Hefner uh, fabric pull. And it's basically, just a simple, you know, that we've got several here at AirTech. We have to test glue joints. Uh, I actually, the other day, was just testing a, a heat on this one at a certain pounds of pull. What 375, what 400, what 425, what 450, what 475. The actual numbers where you start to see fabric start to relax again. I was just doing some tests of my own. But, you know, if someone comes and looks at your plane and they said, I'm going to do a full inspection of your fabric, you're trying to sell an airplane to me, and I'm gonna take a razor blade and I'm gonna cut an inch or a two inch piece of fabric. Well, someone's gonna get punched in the mouth or something. That, that's a destructive test. Now you gotta go patch the airplane. 
But that's what they're talking about. This is a little one inch piece. But you know, they're, they're talking about so many pounds of pull. And this calibrates, this is nothing but a spring, but you have to keep these calibrated kind of roughly every year with a certain weight and everything. This is just an old version of a Hefner uh, Model 10. But that's what they're talking about when they're cutting a strip out and they're checking the pull and it's so much a percent of original new fabric, you know, test weight and stuff. I had it looked at the back to see, I'm pretty sure it should probably sink in that. Uh, the new system they sell, you know, if you still want to use a dope system, it's, I think, the Synchronite system, but it uses, it doesn't use cotton. It uses this uh, Synchronite fabric, which is very similar to polyfiber and the Superflight and the different ones. The other uh, test method is a model tester, and a friend of mine with a Model 10 company, Don Adamson, he used to kind of tongue-in-cheek started a whole little ruckus on tube and fabric uh, just kind of made that statement. Well, we don't need one of these anymore since everything's lifetime fabric. Well, he was making a joke, but really, if you can keep the sunlight off of sink and I, it's almost indefinite to the point, to me, it'll outlast what that airframe may look like on the inside. So you want to call that lifetime or what? It's lifetime's over when I put a razor through it and rechange it out. There's this lifetime. So this is a mild tester. And it's, and there's ways that you, this come from a local, they had a sale and they closed down, but they had to have it calibrated and it's so many pounds of push, but it's got a little, little raised top there of a certain calibration. Mr. Ma, they come up with these and here's a way you can use these to test struts, I think, and different other, you know, situations, but it's for, you know, testing fabric and uh, back to that subject of lifetime, you know, Brian ran across a, something he found in a Whitman in his building and the paperwork of one of the old, from 1906, early 60s or something, the Razorback system. That was always called the, the Lifetime. You've all seen it, the real thick. That was actually fiberglass fabric with dope and different things in it. And goes back to that Whitman, that's what it had on it, it was Razorback. It was way past due being recovered. It had been painted a couple of times, no telling what it weighed. It was still airworthy. And like we're gonna see on this, I'm gonna do one of these tests and show you that this is not airworthy, but then I'm gonna show you that it is airworthy. Yeah, we, we would say it's time to recover, but you know, if you got this plane down and doing mission work somewhere, and the only important thing is, is it safe? Is the fabric still safe? Yes, it's still, it's still gonna to show to be good fabric to fly, but he showed you those pictures, what this thing really looks like. I'll do them. From what I gather, the FAA talks about taking some of the paint and stuff back to the fabric because that's what you're testing. I hear the old guys talk about, you know, the old cotton, you know, we would put some more dope on it. We'll get a little spot. We'll get it kind of buffed up and do a little cheat and it'll cheat it a little bit. If it's flexible, you know, we'll put something over cotton and we'll get it to where we can push whatever pound, whatever percentage we're wanting to go to. And it tested good for one more year. You know, that's like, you know, the guys doing the annual and they monkey with the prop, monkey with the prop till they get the pre compression to be what they want it to say. So, you know, it tells about taking the fabric back. Well, on this one, since it's a brittle, it's got dope on it, and he shows you those packages. I don't know what they tried to fill the cracks with and stuff. But what you're doing is putting the pressure, and then this thing pops through the hole. It, you know, that's when it supposedly is, you know, bad. It has broke, and it's equivalent. It's, it's relating this to that fabric pull test being the same you know, being the same as so many pounds to poke this through would be so many pounds to break the fabric. But if you walked up to this airplane and you say, well, I'm gonna, I'm not, this just happens to be a tape that, that James pulled off. But if I walked up to this airplane, I said, well, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'm not gonna take the fabric back and I'm gonna test it right here. That popped through. And I don't know, that wasn't 20, 30 pounds. That pop, you know, you know, man, boy, if it did that with a cover, that is no good. You need to be recovered. Well, right off the bat, I'm kind of PO'd. If you did that to my airplane, now you're going to get in your car and go home and say you don't want to buy my airplane. We're going to fist the cuffs right off the bat. Don't let someone walk up to your plane and tell you all about and got one of these in their hand. You better get a good understanding. But with that said, that's, you, you heard what that sounded like. It popped through, and that's in the worst part with the sun. You get down there on the side, oh, it crunched through right then. That one right on that tape. They put something on that, so that might be a little bit rejuvenated. But that right off the bat is 
telling me that that's failing. All right, well, let's go right here. That failed. That failed. If we walked off and I told you that failed, it failed. But look, it, was failure, it did not fail. Here's your sinking out. This is going to be a plug for sinking out fabric, polyfiber fabric, or any of the Dacrons, the Superflight fabric. At AirTech, our, our STC just allows us to go over any certified fabric. And this is, this is to say something good. This is a 72 model. And I think to pass is going to be somewhere in the 50 something right in here. And new is supposed to be right in here. She never went. I guarantee you that I can go get a heat and iron and I probably can have that come right back out. We got done videoing a while ago, but I, I was going to, I didn't want to make a fool of myself and try to do it in front of everybody when I was making that tape. But here's, push that down all the way past 80. Not a thing in the world on it. That fabric is is good. That fabric is not poking a hole. That's 72 model fabric. And like I said, that's, you know, any of these, you poke this, when you dig out one of these little holes, it's, you know, it didn't break the fabric. That fabric, see that fabric right there still? Now it left a little dimple. It might not come out on its own. But just be, you know, Whoop, that failed. No, that's not what happened. That was a crack through it. And that's why the FAA wants you, I think, to clean that bag to where you're testing the fabric. And don't let anybody try to tell you to put some different stuff on it to make something pass. I don't know. I still see planes, you know, trying to be authentic and covering with cotton and stuff nowadays. But, you know, that's under the paint. We, you know, unless you're trying to be a purist or something, those guys are going to have to deal with this in a, in a pretty quick fashion. But the sinking out Dacron type, you know, fabrics, you know, as you can see, that did sound like it failed, but it did not fail. There's the raw fabric. None of this is written in stone in my book. I don't care if you can poke that 300 pounds. This airplane needs to be recovered. This thing needs to be looked at inside. So it did its job. It's time to recover. But if you're using one of these tools, if that airplane has been covered right and it's, and it's had the proper UV protection, tongue in cheek, it is kind of like a lifetime. It's a lifetime of whatever that airframe is going to be. But this, is, this I just thought was a good example to poke around on an airplane. Nobody's going to want to fight me or get in a fight with me. They're fixing to tear it down and just kind of show you, you know, when people talk about different test methods. And to be honest, until I owned AirTech about three years ago, never fooled with one of these. You know, my test was, you know, your fabric feels, man, I don't, you know, see no problem, you know, let's just go with it. You know, when was it covered? Look at the books, you know, go with that. Um, and you'll have guys that, would, you know, they'll poke around on something, they'll find something that sounded like that and they think the fabric's no good. So this is just some little something I just want to show is for what it's worth. And, you know, when people talk about a punch test, what they look like and everything. Thank you.